Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is on the introduction to animals. Animal life began in the Precambrian seas. There were multicellular organisms who ate other organisms. An animal is multicellular, eukaryotic, heterotrophic, and most of them use ingestion, which is eating other organisms or eating organic materials. Animal cells do not have cell walls, and most animals display some type of movement at some point in their life using nervous and or muscular tissue. Most animals reproduce sexually, and animals have a dominant diploid stage with a reduced gametophyte stage. In early embryonic development, the zygote, which is the fertilized egg, undergoes cleavage. This happens when cell division occurs. Cleavage results in a ball of cells, which is hollow, called the blastula. Gastrulation is a cup-like indentation that creates layers of cells. The blastopore is the opening to the outside created by gastrulation, and the archenteron is the space inside the pouch. The endoderm develops into the GI and respiratory tract. A lot of animals have a larval stage. A larva is an immature form that is very different from the adult. It undergoes metamorphosis to become the adult. Hox genes are special regulatory genes in all animals. They control gene expression in embryos. Hox genes are made of homeobox and homeotic genes. Homeobox is a 180 nucleotide sequence within a homeotic gene encoding the part of the protein that binds to the DNA of the gene regulated by the protein. Homeotic genes are master regulatory genes. They control the body plans of animals by directing groups of cells. Animals probably evolved from a colonial flagellated protist from the Precambrian era, about 700 million years ago. Animals most closely are related to fungi. There are over 35 phyla of animals. Molecular systematics has reshaped our view of animal diversity. This is a traditional phylogenetic tree and it's based on body plans and embryonic development. Each major branch is called a grade. It has physical features that are shared by animals in that branch. Parazoans are sponges. They lack true tissues. They're the early branch of the animal kingdom. Eumetazoans have tissues and include all other animals. Eumetazoans are divided into two major branches. The first one, which was previously known as radiata, include the phylum cnidarians and the phylum teneforans. Cnidarians include hydras, jellyfish, and sea anemones, and teneforans include comb jellies. These have radial symmetry, meaning they have a top and a bottom, but they have no head or rear end, and they have no left or right side, and their body is divided into planes like spokes on a wheel or pieces of pizza in a pie. The bilaterias are all the other phyla. They have bilateral symmetry, which means that you can divide their bodies into a plane from head to tail, and they have a dorsal side, which is the top, a ventral side, which is the bottom, an anterior head, and a posterior tail. They also have left and right sides. Bilateria is associated with cephalization, which is a concentration of sense organs at the anterior end. The embryo layers that result from gastrulation are called germ layers. They form in all animals except sponges. The ectoderm develops into the skin, nerves, and sense organs. The endoderm develops into the digestive and respiratory tracts. Bilateral organisms have a third germ layer called the mesoderm, which develops into muscles, the reproductive system, and the excretory system. Animals that have radial symmetry and two germ layers are diploblastic, and animals that have bilateral symmetry and three germ layers are triploblastic. Acelomates have solid bodies and no body cavity. They include flatworms and platyhelminthes. A body cavity is a fluid-filled space separating the digestive tract from the outer body wall. It's a tube within a tube body plan. 
the body cavity cushions organs. The fluid may function as a hydrostatic skeleton and the cavity allows organs to grow and move. Pseudocoelomates have a body cavity that is not completely lined with tissue from the mesoderm. Rotifers and nematodes or roundworms are pseudocoelomates. Coelomates have a true coelom. This is a fluid-filled body cavity that is completely lined with tissue from the mesoderm. The coelomates are divided into two grades, the protostomes and the deuterostomes. The protostomes are mollusks, annelids, and arthropods. Mollusks include clams, snails, and octopus. Annelids are segmented worms like leeches and earthworms, and arthropods include crustaceans, insects, and spiders. The deuterostomes are echinoderms and chordates. Echinoderms include starfish and sea urchins. Chordates include lancelets, tunicates, and vertebrates. Protostomes have spiral cleavage in early embryos. That means that the planes of cell division are diagonal to the vertical axis of the embryo. They also have determinate cleavage. This determines the fate of each cell very early. So if one cell is removed, it will not develop into an embryo. Deuterostones have radial cleavage. The planes are parallel and perpendicular to the vertical axis of the egg. They have indeterminate cleavage, which means each cell is like a stem cell. It can still develop into a complete embryo. This is how identical twins form, when one or more of the cells separate and a, another embryo grows into a baby. All of these cells are undifferentiated at this point. Later in development, the coelom formation is different in protostomes and deuterostomes. In protostomes, a solid mass of mesoderm split to form the coelom cavity. This is called the schistocoelus. In the deuterostomes, the mesoderm buds from the wall of the artenterom, which is the pouch, to form the coelom cavities. The fate of the blastopore, which is the opening of the, uh, the pouch or the archenteron, um, is different. After the archenteron develops, a second opening forms. Those two openings become the mouth and the anus. In protostomes, the mouth forms from the first opening, which is the blastopore. In deuterostomes, the mouth forms from the second opening, and the blastopore becomes the anus. This phylogenetic tree is a new one based on SSUR RNA sequences which are small subunit RNA found in ribosomes. Modern systematics has not reinforced the traditional tree, but the two trees agree in the following ways. One is that all animals share a common ancestor. They are it in the metazoa clad. Two is sponges are basal animals. They lack true tissues and they are monophyletic, which means they all share a common ancestor and make up one clad. Three, the eumetazones have true tissues. They are true animals. And four, most animals are bilateral. They have bilateral symmetry and three germ layers. And chordates are part of the deuterostome clad. The two trees differ mainly the first way is that the two main protostome clads um, in the new tree, molecular evidence resolves the two clads of protostomes. There is the, lo the Lophotrochozoa and the Didozoas. The locophores are annelids and mollusks, and the other ectidozoas are arthropods. In the old tree, annelids and arthropods were closer together due to the fact that they both have segmented bodies. Also, there has been a relocation of the acelomates and the pseudocelomates. In the old tree, acelomates, like flatworms, branched from the tree before the origin of body cavities. In the new tree, molecular data places flatworms with protostomes in the lophochorzen clad, meaning that flatworms lost the coelom later in evolution. The pseudocelomates, like rotifers and nematodes, are roundworms. They are also included with the protostomes on the new tree. And the assignment of the locophorite phyla. In the old tree, this phyla contained animals with a locophore. That's a horseshoe shaped crown of ciliated tentacles used for feeding. In the old tree, the lines were dashed because the locophorates um, share characteristics with protostomes and deuterostomes. Molecular data indicates that they now know they belong with the protostomes. The locophores have a 
trochophore larvae, and this is a picture of that type of larvae. The fossil record and molecular studies support the theory that many animal phyla evolved rapidly over 40 million years during the late Precambrian and early Cambrian eras. This was about 565 to 525 million years ago. The Ediacaran period was the last period of the Precambrian era. It is named for the Ediacaran Hills in Australia, where fossils of the Precambrian era were first discovered. Those fossils were about 365 to 543 million years old. There is some evidence that animal life began much earlier. In 2000, researchers discovered fossilized animal embryos in the Chinese strata, about 570 million years old. In 1998, paleontologists discovered what could be fossilized animal burrows in rocks that are considered to be about 1.1 billion years old. The data of molecular systematics also supports animal origins about a billion years ago. But until there is more evidence, all we know for sure is that a diversity of animals evolved by the Ediacaran period, cnidarians, soft-bodied mollusks, and worms. All major body plans appeared during the Cambrian explosion 543 to 525 million years ago. The Cambrian explosion was a burst of animal origins. Evo Devo is the evolutionary and developmental biology theory that includes three main hypotheses for the Cambrian explosion. The first is that there was an ecological cause to the Cambrian explosion. Predator-prey relationships developed during the Cambrian explosion. This led to changes in dynamics of biological commun communities, which led to a diversity of adaptation. For example, shells and diverse modes of locomotion. The second explanation is the geologic causes. Atmospheric oxygen finally reached a level high enough to support more active metabolisms required for the feeding and other activities of mobile animals. And the third is genetic causes. The diversity of the 35 animal phyla is associated with variations in the Hox genes of developing embryos. So the evolution of the Hox genes led to variations in embryo development. The Cambrian explosion was probably due to a combination of all three of these. By the end of the Cambrian radiation, the animal phyla were locked into developmental patterns that constrained evolution enough that no new phyla evolved after that.